I do a lot of big pieces and we do a lot of public work, but I haven't been excited like this for a long time and it really feels like I'm seven and it's December 23rd. This is very much a piece of work that's about elements coming together in a sort of slightly worrying, dizzying spiral. This structure is really quite overwhelming. The sculpture weighs about 26 tonnes in total. It's made of weathering steel, so it's designed to rust. It's about 14 metres tall. When we first saw the sculpture, the size was a concern and how we assembled it. It's actually quite challenging because it's a very narrow at the bottom and a lot wider at the top. It is a stack of tetrahedrons and each one is made independently and then fabricated and put together. Each tetrahedron has been distorted so that the form continues to grow as it winds upwards. By the time you get up to the top, this top tetrahedron is five and a half metres wide. Every side of it, when you stand right up against it with your nose against the sculpture, it's going to overhang by three and a half metres in all directions. When you look up at the, the base, you're going to have to crank right back. It's going to be immense. This was a project funded by the Wellcome Trust. A number of artists submitted plans, and we had quite a lot of trouble choosing between them. Conrad was pitching against very big artists of international standing, so it's the strength of the proposal and his merits. It was a very difficult selection process. Conrad brought in this model. It was rather bulky. We didn't quite know what was underneath the cloth, and then it was whisked away, rather like a conjurer, so that we could see exactly what he was thinking of. He wanted to capture the philosophy, the ethos of what these people working in this building were up to rather than the nitty gritty of it. He came with a concept, he came with a philosophy, and he came with a word paradigm. It's an amazing location in London. It's so exciting in terms of the broad range of demographics we're going to see it. And the very fact that it's by St Pancras, you actually see it as you're coming out of Eurostar. It will be of interest to the tourists and those travelling through the station, but I also hope it will be of interest to the local community because the Crick Institute sits at the border between the British Library, St Pancras Station, major public buildings and institutions, and really quite normal looking domestic housing. And the Crick sort of is forging a link really between these two different areas in London. As well as a successful conceptual art piece, I hope it has an accessibility and will create a way in for people who aren't necessarily involved in science, that it gives a doorway into this sort of building in a way that's not abstract to them. There is something quite intriguing that anyone can get something from it. I think this connection between excellence in science and excellence in the arts is just very appropriate for this whole initiative uh, around the Francis Crick Institute. So this rather immense structure is going to have to be brought in I believe by a specially modified lorry at night. It's an abnormal load because it's so wide at the top and because it's so long and because it's so heavy. It left Dagenham at midnight last night and it arrived here at four in the morning with escorts taking on the roads very, very slowly just because it's incredibly long, the lorry, very, very low, hugely heavy load, so you have to be very, very careful. But it arrived safely at sort of four. They sort of rigged up the cranes at six and I arrived at seven. It's now lunchtime and we're kind of just, we're just basically levelling the sculpture, making sure it's perfectly vertical. Tomorrow you'll be able to walk straight up to it. It's really wonderful. It's the first time I've seen it upright. I'm really over the moon. It's such a great feeling.